Hello, I'm Derek Terry, host of I'm Not Complaining, I'm Just Saying. Here at one of my favorite spots, the barbershop, where we know if you're gonna complain here, then you better provide solutions. Good. It's good. I firmly believe when we make other people's problems part of our conversations without providing solutions or prayer, then we become part of the problem. I wanna be able to provide people with a platform where they can freely express their views on such topics as education, social issues, health and fitness, and that's good, or sports. So please join me so we can complain and provide solutions together. Hey, what's going on, people? Let me go ahead and mute this real quick. Um, welcome to uh, another episode of I'm Not Complaining, I'm Just Saying, where you're going to complain. Be ready to bring solutions to the table. Hey, in a couple minutes, I got Greg Waring. He's going to be on. And we're going to talk about the charter board. Greg Waring currently is the uh, chairman of the Charles County Charter Board. And he's going to be here to provide a little insight on uh, what the charter board is doing, as well as some questions. So uh, with that, I'll be right back. One. All right, y'all, welcome back. As I said, I got my man Greg Waring on here, chairman of the Charles County Charter Board. How you doing there, Greg? Hey, good evening. What's up, Derek? How are you doing, sir? Man, I'm out here in Minnesota, like I told you, out here in Minnesota. So that usually it's the opposite. I'm I'm the one that's wearing what Greg is wearing. Greg is normally wearing the suit and jacket <laughs> and all that. So <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. So um, how's everything? Everything's good. You know, just balancing, you know, work, kids, uh, you know, community things. Uh, I can't complain. It makes the time go by. You know. And before I forget, you know, big shout out to your son and North Point, um, the soccer team. I, I know they didn't go as far as they wanted to, but hey, they played their hearts out. I didn't get a chance to check out the uh, parts of the last game, but I, I, yeah. did, I was able to catch at least two playoff games. So big shout outs to them. Hey, man, it, it, it's a very cool thing, uh, especially when they need that support in a playoff run to have folks come out. You know, and you were a pleasant surprise at the boys' games and and the uh, North Point ladies' games. Very cool. I'm sports. All right, so look, we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I told the uh, viewers before uh, through the previous um, uh, taping, I went over the differences between the charter board and all the other stuff, so we're not going to bother the time. I want to get straight into the nitty-gritty, okay? So how did we get here with the charter board? How did we get here? Well, there, there's a short answer and there's a, there's a long history here. And Charles County has, um, you know, examined the idea of transitioning from its current form of government to charter over the years. Uh, Charles County attempted uh, to move to charter government back in the 70s, uh, was unsuccessful. And in 2014, there was a ballot initiative to move to move to charter form of government um, and was uh, unsuccessful, though a significant part of the population did vote for it. Um, this time around, with the previous board of commissioners, not the current board, uh, there were a series of meetings and presentation about charter government and to explain what the differences were and what the option could be to go to charter. So there were presentations back in 2018 and 2019 mm -hmm. uh, before the previous board of commissioners that has many of the same members that we have now. Um, fast forward to this year with the new board, uh, that conversation continued and back in the spring, um, as the Maryland constitution allows, uh, the Board of Commissioners voted to appoint a charter board to start the process of writing a document that voters will um, ultimately vote on uh, come November of 2024. Yeah, um, so that was definitely one of the things I touched on. I said, regardless you agree or not, the commissioners voted three to two. Like any other administration, someone's going to be upset because they didn't feel someone voted the way they wanted to vote it. But look, they voted it. You respect it. Now the charter yeah. board is formed. So I know that has been formed. Uh, we want to start to address the elephants in the room. Um, the first things first, 
the charter's not complete. It's in a draft. No. So there's been a lot of disinformation that's been thrown out there about what the charter will have, won't have, and all these other stuff. So I got a couple key criticisms or, or things I've seen on social media. Um, and then they've been addressed time and time again. So now I look at it as an opportunity for you as the chairman to set the record straight. So the first thing I'm going to talk about, will the new, well, the, the new charter uh, is going to cost taxpayers more dollars than what, I mean, tons and tons of more dollars than what we currently have now with the new charter. How do you address that? Uh, the cost of government is not dictated by which form. And we heard that from the Maryland Association of Counties at our November 28th meeting. We had them as a guest. They're a neutral party. They represent or, uh, all forms of government throughout the state. And the MAKO representative, you know, offered to the board that it's demographics, it's the services residents demand and require that's going to dictate cost, not the form of government. And you have some uh, governments throughout the state that are not chartered, that are on the expensive side, and you have some charter governments that are some of the least costly governments. Um, and, and, and backing up, you know, part of what they're part of what you, you're hitting on is also this argument that there's going to be these tax increases as a result of charter. There's no automatic triggering mechanism in any charter that's going to cause a tax increase. A county council and an executive would have to agree by vote. To, to increase taxes or not, just like a board of commissioners right now could raise taxes or not to pay for more services in Fremont County. So uh, I do think that's a piece that's not understood and sometimes used as misinformation. But the other thing you talk about, you talked about that it won't necessarily raise taxes, but what I've hear people saying, so, oh, we're going to have a, either a bigger budget or a bigger government. But to some degree, I can understand because our population is growing. So if our population is growing, the demand for services, I'm assuming, would grow. And to some degree, the budget will grow. Yeah. And, yeah. And, 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 we, and we have to have a balanced budget, right? So, you know, we move to a charter and we create a new structure. Um, it's going to mean that we either have to find some other priorities or use some of the, the revenue that that we continue to bring in uh, to pay for it. And, and, there's, and there's ways to find savings. We're talking about this charter board is talking about how a council and executive can share the county attorney's office. Um, we're talking about how you can move staff around to help serve a new executive in the executive suite. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, we have to afford it within the revenues that we collect. Okay. Uh, there is no tax increase that has to happen under any form of government. Um, and, 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 and oh, by the way, you know, Charles County has reserves, annual reserves, uh, additional revenue that now totals almost 200 million. I think it's 194.6 million in reserves. Um, and it's a great thing. We need those reserves. It helps with our bond rating. Uh, but it's a proof point that we can afford, uh, you know, what might be an additional elected executive that would be in 2014. I think it was a $150,000 position. And, and, for, and, you, and you're still working out those kinks. So it's, it just, you are. I hear people talking about things that's not even in there. Right. Um, now, one of the things that I know has been very testy, and I've seen, I'll just say, elected officials and those that, either for or against, but mostly against the charter, is that, oh, man, it's going to do away with the sheriff's department. And now we're going to get a whole new police department. Yeah. Someone who's lived in the current form of government that we're proposing, they still have a sheriff's department. And that's in Hartford County. So they don't have a separate police department. So how do yep. you address this? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say disinformation, but scare tactic is what I would call it. How do you yeah, that? you know, there's, uh, you know, you mentioned Harford. Every single charter county since 1972 uh, elected to only have a sheriff. Harford, Talbot, Cecil, Dorchester, uh, Frederick. Every single charter county since 1972 decided that their voters wanted to have all law enforcement with the elected sheriff. But backing up, the Maryland state constitution requires a sheriff in every single county, period. Um, so there is no scenario where, uh, you know, a sheriff would be removed under a charter. If, if Charles County residents, you know, thought that it made sense to have a police chief deal with day to day law enforcement and the elected sheriff handle processing warrants, uh, court security and detention, 
they would divide responsibilities. If Charles County residents wanted that, um, that that's that's what we want. That's what we want to hear. And the sheriff would still remain. Um, but most recent charters, again, you know, did not include that police chief and it only retained the elected sheriff. Yeah, because to me, it's no different when there was this push to get rid of SROs. Community weighed in. They kept the SROs. And yeah. if the community, I, I don't see, at least from what I've been observing, this big push to get rid of the sheriff's department. You know, doing an excellent well, again, job. we won't get rid of it. We won't get rid of no, it. No, what I'm saying, I, what I'm saying yeah. is the, the form, the form our the form the, our own uh, police department. Yeah. Because the other yeah. thing people have to look at, and, and you know, I heard this during the commissioner's meeting today, is that you know, people are worried about crime. So if anything, I would see the sheriff's department. Um, getting an increase not only in the budget, but in but an increase in the the amount of deputies that they currently have. Because for a, for most administrations, the sheriff hasn't gotten an increase in his deputies. Meaning that, let's say for instance, um, he's short twenty, but then you got twenty that retire. So guess what? Yeah. We're going to give you uh, a budget for twenty more. So now I'm at zero. You didn't give me anything. Right. All you did was just absorb what I lost. You didn't give me the nothing treasure. extra. Yeah. So I think this form of government can more address it. And definitely with a matrix that the school systems have, which brings me to the school system. How will this impact um, our schools? It doesn't. It doesn't. You know, we don't. It's outside our jurisdiction to um, have anything in the charter that directly impacts uh, the board of education and how they are elected by voters and the Board of Education's responsibility to select uh, a superintendent. A charter or any form of government uh, in the state of Maryland cannot um, uh, directly address the school system. And our board members aren't interested in that anyway. Um, I, I, I will say this, both with the state requirement for a Board of Education and the state requirement for a sheriff, I'll argue that both of those groups will have an easier time interfacing with Charles County government with an executive handling the day-to-day -day operations and then a council to move, move legislation. I think it'll be clear to them who they negotiate with on budget and then who they walk the budget through the approval process with the council. Um, I, I just think it will make their management and their communication with uh, the elected leaders easier. Yeah, because um, that's because that's good to know. Because what I what I see on social media is, oh man, if, if the uh, school if we have this charter form of government now, the county exec or whoever the, whatever the title is going to be able to pick the superintendent like they do in Prince George's County. But that's a special circumstance where the public demanded that. From what, what I understand, the public. Well, you know. That. I'm glad you brought that example up. Yeah. And, you know, BJ uh, uh, brought that up in a, in a commissioner meeting, and it was unfortunate. He says that the public should know that the county executive can roll the superintendent under the executive branch. That's false. Yeah. What, happened in, what happened in 2013 was, um, in, in Prince George's County, had a number of education challenges. They went to the General Assembly because the state law requires a board of education that appoints the superintendent. At the very end of that session in 2013, they went and lobbied their General Assembly and they changed the law for Prince George's County. Didn't matter if Prince George's was a charter or Prince George's could have been code home rule, but they changed the law to allow for the appointment of a superintendent and an appointment of some of the Board of Education. It has nothing to do with charter at all. Um, and I thought it was unfortunate that a sitting commissioner in a public setting, you know, either didn't understand it but he's worked in a charter of government for 20 plus years. He or, didn't understand it or was using it to rile up people about charter. Or, and, or, or what you also could say, and I wasn't there. I know there's another commissioner, whether or not she still works for PG County or not, she should have known that that was a false statement. Yeah. You know, and, you and know again, because I, I, you know, I know because I used to work in PG. Yeah. My wife works in PG. So, I'm aware yeah. of the stuff that, you know, they have their challenges like every other school system. But mm -hmm. just to go on record, this proposed charter form of government will have no direct impact on Charleston. We have no, we have no jurisdiction. Okay. I, mean, I, I think the only thing, and I've talked to some school board members, um, including, you know, Ms. Daughter and our board, you know, are there ways that we can improve the budget process to be more transparent and that the school system would have an easier time, you know, as they negotiate 
uh, with an executive or a council. And again, again, same thing with the sheriff. I think there's opportunities here that can help those state required bodies. Um, but again, you know, I've known I've known BJ for a long for a long time. We went to the play together. I was a little bit ahead of him. You know, you know, I I, I have a relationship with um, four of the five commissioners, uh, and I, I I think all of them have a responsibility in a public setting to provide information that's accurate um, yeah. and not intentionally, you know, rile up people about something that's not possible under the charter document. Yeah, and this that, doesn't, really, that doesn't help any of us. It no, certainly doesn't. It doesn't help their credibility either. Yeah, so and, just, and what I'm saying for, for those that are out there listening or watching, this is sole purpose of why I want to do this because no one has time to go back and forth on social media. Yeah. We work, we got lives, and right now he's putting it out there. I don't, I can't see his answer changing, you know, unless they do something mysteriously within the charter. Which, which, and I want to stay on PG because I've also heard this, and and to me it's sort of like a gaslighting where, well, the new charter is going to turn us into Prince George's County. I'm thinking, okay, what does that mean? What, explain to me what that means. What do you now? If you don't want to explain it, I can explain what it means. What I think it means. So, so I so Derek, you know, I value everyone that lives here, whether you're a native or you moved here, or you invested in Charles County, right? I'm a native, right? So I've grown up here. Um, I grew up in Indian Head and, and then moved to the Waldorf where my mom remarried. Uh, and that has always been used in a very coded way to say, let's keep, you know, a black population, a minority population, a growing population out of Charles County. I'm going to be blunt. It's been used that way. And a lot of us feel the connotation of what that what that represents when you say we don't want to be like Prince George's County. Now, there, there could be honest people out here that think whether it's the size of the county and maybe some of their own policy challenges shouldn't come here. But I know the history of this and people that are from here know the history of how that's always been used in a very coded way about in Charles County. So I think that, that is at play here. We have to be very honest about the history here in Charles County and some of those kind of dynamics. Um I, I think Derek also, you know, it's a neighboring county. So is it natural to compare us to Prince George's? Maybe. But we're apples and oranges, size wise. Big. big. I'm right? size, the way the venues, economic development, it doesn't. Yeah. Close. Yeah. You know, and, 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 and that's why we've had meetings, you know, that's why we brought down people who operate and manage in Cecil County and Harford County in Frederick County, because that's where Charles County is going trend-wise uh, with population growth, with how we're trying to bring some work centers here and expand our, our tax base. Uh, Prince George's, Montgomery, Anne Arundel, Baltimore County, Howard County, they're these more mature counties that have been charter for a long time. Montgomery was the first, 1948 right? Prince George is 1970. So they span that, that yeah. set of time. The ones that I mentioned, 2012, Frederick County, 2010, I think Cecil County. Yeah, and Frederick is, it's thriving. And re yes. regardless of your party affiliation, uh, th they're thriving. Now you did mention something when you talked about economic development. So mm -hmm. we do know in the recent news that, well, at least for right now, hopefully it'll stay, that Greenbelt was awarded, um, I guess, the location for FBI. Yeah. Under their current form of government, or under our current form of government, would that how difficult would that have been to, I guess, get them here? Or well, you, would there been any, any, or if any, it may, maybe it wouldn't be in anything. I don't know. Well, that was a large... Not saying, they, saying they would come here, but what I'm saying yeah. is, if yeah. under the current form of government... Well, you know... FBI, is a, that's a huge win. They were, you know, the state of Maryland was competing with Virginia and the District of Columbia on, on where to, to relocate or rebuild that headquarters. So that was a huge win. Greenbelt is a charter, right? Municipalities operate with a charter um, and, and Greenbelt has that. And if you can point to Greenbelt, and I think it may have been referenced today, um, they're able to align their message under the leadership of an executive to all be on the same page and then to work with, you know, a federal, the federal government's a jar, right? Or well, if you want to bring a business community in, they have a CEO. Uh, so it's much easier. And we heard Harford County say 
you know, businesses operate with the structure. So when they negotiate on where, where to locate, you know, they want to know that they're talking to the right person and not other folks that might be undermining the message. Yeah. Um, you, you bring, you're bringing up a complicated example though, because that was a huge yeah. undertaking. Yeah. I was just, I'm just kind of looking at it where to me, it seems that our current form of government, although we stress economic development, it makes it very difficult to achieve it at the level that we should based on our current form of government. And Maybe, and you know, I'm not going to go deep into it, but uh, another, uh, I guess, scare tactic is that oh, it's, this it's going to cause all this corruption. And before you answer that, this is what I want to tell people: whether it's the what what is it, uh, theocracy, monarchy, socialism, Marxism, whatever form of government you think of, is not free from corruption. <laughs> just corruption at all levels and that's our job to find it and root it out and hold people accountable yeah. right and and this is brought up in, in prince george's is used in this case too yeah. people bring up jack johnson right uh but you know there was a county commissioner president that served jail time in the 80s and kept his position on some gambling charges right and i think the judge called it corruption that same commissioner president was also siphoning gas for personal vehicles. There was a county administrator in the 90s that was embezzling money from White Plains Regional Park. This is all under a board of commissioners. So, you know, and never mind that there's current issues with our current board of commissioners when it comes to interference, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have these issues in any form of government. What I will say, you know, when it comes to uh, guardrails and accountability, if we create a charter structure, voters know who's responsible for what. They know a council is responsible for legislation and if they're not moving legislation on residents' behalf or doing a poor job, you vote them out because you know that was their job. If we have an executive, if they're not operating agencies and going out to win economic development opportunities, you vote them out because you know that was their job. And, and, and to kind of talk about what's going on now, you you would also know that you know sitting council people shouldn't be uh, having you know interference with county staff and vice versa. The executive shouldn't be having interference with council staff. So there's clear lines here, and at the end, and we'll able we'll be able to hold people accountable for their actions. Yeah, and to we me, have that like, opportunity right now with the charter. Yeah, and, you know, and to me, it's no different than any other organization, if you put together a committee, you trust a committee to do their job and get back with yeah. you. And yeah. the time to argue or the time to agree is when you submit that final report. Yes. So as we close, one question, I actually, I wouldn't even say question. Well, actually, even a question or statement, I don't even know how I'm going to phrase it. But you know I'm big on education. Yeah. You're big on education. The committee yeah. is big on education. Why is it so, so important, regardless if um, a, a, a resident agrees or disagrees, to provide you and the charter board with input? You know, um, this is a constitution. It's a blank slate. That's what Mako told us. Charter literally is a blank slate. And we have a real opportunity to shape what county government looks like going forward. You may be against the idea of an executive separate from the council. Uh, but there's a significant opportunity here and you may, you know, voters may have to live with it uh, if it's approved, even if you voted no. So why not contribute to the process and help us write a better document, right? If you have strong feelings that our current commissioners who do not have term limits and they can just continue to run, you know, and be career politicians, if you think they should be term limited, let us know that. Even if you vote no on the charter when it's on the ballot next year. Um, if you think that there's too much bickering and too much politics in day-to-day -day government, um, there should be a, a separate executive from the council. Um, you know, you have that chance to vote for it uh, in November and next year. So I think I think there's a significant chance based on the last election in 2014 for for a charter um, that uh, that it could pass this time. And I just think this is your opportunity to contribute to a better document. Yeah, because I'm gonna be perfectly honest. I was here in 2014, and I don't even recall. I, I hear a little doggy in the background. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. No, that's fine. <laughs> but I, I, don't, I don't even recall hearing anything about it. Yeah. And you, you know me, I'm pretty much out there. And I'm like, where, when did this happen? 
And it pretty much, you know, a, as we close, one of the things that I wanted people to be um, very, very clear about is that it's a draft. Yes. It's a draft. If you provide no input, then they have no choice but to draft something based on what they feel. That's and, true. And, and that's why it's important. I see a lot of social media scholars and talkers or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, you have these board meetings, I believe, uh, what, every other Thursday or the second? Yeah, uh, essentially, essentially. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, twice you know, a month. You know, hopefully you'll change your format with the uh, public we, comments. And, and, and we are, to, to your credit and to uh, others that have come at our next meeting, November 30th, we're going to have public comment uh, towards the top of the meeting. We have a guest speaker coming up uh, November 30th. So after our guest speaker, we're going to go right to public comment because I think that was a great point. Okay, um, It's hard enough to get folks out after yeah. work on a weekday. So why make them wait to the end of a meeting? Yeah. Uh, so and I'm glad you and others raised and, that. And, it, and it's your opportunity, and, you know, for those out there listening and watching, it's your opportunity. I, I don't, I'm not going to argue with you if you're for or against. I just want you to be educated. Make an yeah. educated decision. And, and, and there, you know, uh, if, if, if I can add, though, you know, before you close, it is, and you've been there, man. And, you know, I think there's been times where you're the only speaker there, or maybe one another. Um, and we do need the input. And without the input, you know, we are going out, we're, we're district-based charter board members, we're talking to our networks, we're reaching out to new organizations, we're going to HOA meetings. Uh, I encourage, if there's an organization out there that wants to, to have a dialogue with us, that you can email us uh, at charterboard at charlescountymd.gov, and we will take the meeting. Uh, I know board members are eager to come to you all uh, to hear from you directly where we can have a dialogue. Because uh, it's hard to get people uh, to to be able to be there at seven thirty at night towards the end of our meeting. Yeah, who you telling? Um, I was there. Yeah. But, oof. <laughs> but it's you, important. We got to go through the details, right? We got to go through yeah. line edits to text because we have to do the work. But that's that's hard for people to sit through. Hey, and, what, and what people understand is once it's submitted, two things are going to happen: either you're going to vote for it, or you vote against it. Yeah. If you vote for it, me personally. I don't want to see anybody who's elected official trying to run for an office because you was against it. So I understand why you're running for an office. That's just my opinion. If you're against it, why are you running for it? I'm not touching <laughs> and, that. And then if it fails, we always have that municipality to come back up. So I and, and, and you know what? The, but 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 what you just said though about running for it, if it if it's successful, that is also a piece that needs to be cleared up because there is a, there is a, a misunderstanding about what happens after the charter is approved, if it's approved, right? So you're going to vote on it in November, 2024. Um, I'm going to presume that the charter is going to say, because we haven't written this part yet, that it will be effective in the first election of a council and an executive in 2026. Yeah. So that means all current commissioners right now, no one slides into a position. They oh, okay. and, that's, and that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, they have to run for these new positions. And who and then, knows who's going to run? And then also it's based on where you live at. That's yeah. a provision that they changed this year after they changed the board. I understand why they didn't do it both, but that's a whole different story. For We're going to retain that. We're, yeah. we're absolutely going to retain some form of uh, uh, district-based and at-large, but mostly district-based council people. Uh, there's questions right now. The board isn't in the same place about how many districts. Uh, it's a healthy conversation, uh, but there will be district-based voting for those district-based council people. Okay. Well, look, man, with that, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. You know, I'm busy, you're busy, but I, I think this is something that needed to be done, need to be shared, and it'll be there forever. So if someone questions, I'm saying, you know what, go back to the video that I had with Greg Waring. He'll, he addressed that question for us already. There, thank you, man. But, and um, I'm hoping I'm hoping once we get a little further in the process that we can come back and talk about what the draft looks like after we get through all, all four of the public. Oh, areas. yeah, mo most definitely. Most definitely. I, I look forward to you come back on or anytime you want to come on or anybody from the from the board, they want to come on and talk about specifics about the charter. You know, just just drop me, just drop uh, me a line. All right. We got a great crew. So, thank you, Derek. All right, man. Peace and blessings to everybody. And remember, uh, what is it? November 5th? 
Four? For for the uh, November fifth, twenty twenty four. Yeah, so that that's what it'll be on the ballot. But I'm almost certain y'all y'all get that at, at, with the days to come. So yes. Until, every, until next time. Blaze the path.